Debra Ferreira is an associate professor of Portuguese at Utah Valley University. Uh, we are very pleased to have uh, such a fine scholar of Portuguese and Brazilian studies so close to us and, uh, and available to come and speak with us today. She serves as the coordinator of UVU's Portuguese program. She is the director of UVU's uh, study abroad program, which is to Recife this year. I wish I were going, of all years, uh, to be going. Uh, with the uh, World Cup. She also coordinates and administers a, an important uh, language exam called the Selpibras. And if any of you are interested, this is an exam administered by the Brazilian government, uh, an exam that provides you with a qualification, uh, a very good qualification to work uh, internationally using your, using your Portuguese. Um, so if you're interested, contact me. I can give you more information about how to register for that. Um, she's also a member of the steering committee for Utah's Portuguese Immersion uh, Program. Here in the state of Utah, you may or may not know that there are now six elementary schools teaching dual immersion Portuguese courses. Um, so it's, it's exciting to see the growth of Portuguese around the state. Uh, Professor Fajeda is a member of the Brazilian Studies Association and the American Association for, of Teachers of Spanish and Portuguese as well as the Modern Language Association. She's published a series of articles in uh, very well-respected journals. Uh, re she received her MA and PhD at the University of Georgia. And uh, again, I'm very pleased to have her with us today, and I look forward to your presentation. Thank you, everybody, for your warm welcome. I hope you find this presentation uh, kind of fun. I had lots of fun working on it, and I've been doing this. When I finished my PhD, my dissertation was about images of uh, Brazil in literature uh, from different time periods. And I've been kind of conducting the same kind of research, but in different types of media. And uh, recently, I've been doing a little bit on movies. So this is the latest one that I've been working on. And this is a bit different because I usually work with um, uh, you know, product, products from Brazil. So this is one that is a bit of a hybrid. So I'm kind of looking at things that are done here in the US. Uh, but um, I just, OK. So I will read what I got. Feel free um, to kind of um, maybe take some notes. Uh, and I guess in the end, we're going to open for questions. Okay. So today we live in a globalized time. Distance seems shorter and crossing national borders are more common. With Brazil as an emerging market, now as the sixth strongest economy, a new boom of its representation in American media was to be expected. The past 10 years have been when I most saw Brazil represented in US media. From Seu Jorge's soundtrack in Life Aquatic, 2004, to the many US musicians singing in Brazil or singing Brazilian songs. And I have a, quite a, a long list. Uh, passing by many references in film, for example, The Rundown, The Incredible Hulk, Indiana Jones, Fast Five, Master Commanders, Ocean's Eleven, Twilight, Breaking Dawn, and TV, of course, The Simpsons, uh, Children's Hospitals, and so many ads. More importantly, a few major Brazilian cinematic productions have reached out theaters. City of God from 2002, the year my parents went on vacation, 2006. Elite Squad 1, 2007. Elite Squad 2, 2010. Though most time not, in the main, not, not on the mainstream circuit. The prevalence of the internet, of course, has made Brazil much more visible allowing access to daily newspapers, radios, TV, and videos, both from abroad as from within the USA, an intense dialogue between countries and communities of immigrants. 2011 brought us the animation reel, which responds very well to its time. First of all, because it continues a certain comforting representation of Brazil, it started in flying down to Rio, Oh, I'm sorry. So this is the movies that I was talking about. So from flying down, flying down to Rio, 1933, though updated to its time. Secondly, because it eases the concerns brought by unsettling representations seen in movies such as City of God and Elite Squad. 
directed by Carlos Saldanha, real. So this is, this is, wait, oh, okay. So Rio 2011 is an example of cross-national efforts, a tendency seen over the past two decades where filmmakers, okay, go back, where filmmakers create transnational products through casting, setting, narrative, and aesthetic choices that facilitate the film's marketing to international audiences and help satisfy the different economic and political interests of the co-producing parties. An American animation in collaboration with Brazil and Canada Produced by Bruce Anderson and John Donkin and written by Don Reimer, Rio Springs, oh, I'm sorry, I kind of, uh, this might not be the last version. Okay, I'm sorry. And today catapulted to project to Rio 2. Its plot is well known. A Macau needs to be brought back to Brazil to assure the continuity of its species. In this journey of salvation, Several local and global challenges afflict the birds and its humans, bringing them to work together against the evil forces, championing values of friendship, love, and good. Much has been written about what constitutes Brasilidade, Brazil's geographic beauty, a longing for a lost past, the other seen as diverse, negative, different or lacking social norms, the contrast between primitive and natural with metropolitan, innocence and sin. All of these were noted since Pedro Vaz de Caminha's letter from the 1500, as Silvano Peloso's points. Some of these themes are repeated in Rio's metonymical construction of Brazil, providing continuity to an American audience in those in the aforementioned musicals or in the Disney animation Saludo Amigos 1942 or the Three Caballeros 1944. The first one of those uh, is a portrait of Brazil as a truly lost paradise, though hidden in marks of modernity, such as contemporary architecture, roads, and science labs. Scenes of modernity are inter interwoven with idyllic forests, much like Bianca Freire Medeiros had noted above the musicals. The, even the classical area view of Rio, do we have it here? Is it here? Okay. Even the classical area view of Rio is seen here the excuse of paragliding scene where blue is expected to fly. Andy? at the beach, of course. Nevertheless, something is added to this simple continuous discourse because the traditional dichotomy of primitive and natural versus metropolitan is quite fluid. The cold Minnesota, though content, is the one seen stuck in time, while science and innovation resides in the Brazilian ecology labs. This is a fantastic seen, isn't it, from th th flying down to Rio, can you imagine that? We see the parallels are so perfect. I mean, you just kind of, just take your time and watch those movies, it's just impressive. The dialogue that they establish with, with one another. And this all goes very well with the good neighbor policy of the 1940s. Today, as at that time, it is important to both Brazilian and U.S. government to support efforts to emulate friendship, as well as cultural, business, and scientific exchanges. I have to note that Adrian Melgoz observed, with reference to flying down to Rio, that Rockefeller, having in mind that there is no use for adversarial polarity between U.S. and Brazil, insisted on representing Brazil as a modern nation therefore implying that it's ready, able, and willing to be a partner in U.S. national interest. So, <laughs> this is wonderful, isn't it? Like it says right at the beginning, not real. And it's very contrary to what we have seen in, uh, in previous movies. Uh, associating Brazil with lab, scientific labs is just it's just nowhere else uh, in another movie. We don't see that. In associating the US also with marks of being backwards or stuck in time, you also don't see that. Mm. Okay. 
gosh, I think I got an, an older version of my paper. I'm sorry, I apologize. Another trope continuing in Rio concerns issues of otherness. So, I mean, when, when the U.S., and this is what I have here, when the U.S. looks at Brazil, what is it that the U.S. sees? And we have here a few of the ideas that they are represented. For example, you see the barbecue, you see the coração de galinha, right? You see. Uh, this dialogue is fantastic. When, it, when she dialogues with uh, Blue, and, and then she says, I'm scared too, I don't know what the future, what the future holds, what this distant place might be. But it does speak to the audience of, uh, of both movies. I'm sorry, I'm kind of having to, um, I just realized that this is the wrong paper. Ugh. Now, on the issue of otherness, I want to bring here the issue of language. And this is a very interesting aspect because the US constantly says that the U.S. needs to globalize, but often, and, and this it has been more, um, more, more recent um, aspects, we need to globalize, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we need to learn a language. The, con the, the appeal to globalize and still do it in English is very constant. And uh, if you look at the, uh, some of the documents of the, f of the funding for uh, programs of foreign language, uh, s uh, national support for that, and our universities that are closing some programs in some of the language, you see that this is what's going on. And um, such as what you see there, um, in some of these, you, see, you have seen it before. So, for example, the first one, you see, this is José Carioca in the Three Caballeros. And if you look at it, you have, a, you have as, much, as much of Portuguese that it kind of identify that you know, you're transposing, you are going to another territory there. This, this one from Road to Rio from 1947, this one is spectacular. We don't have to know the language because you know, it really is all about sensuous experience, right? It's just, looking and falling in love and feeling this, this different country. And um, th this, is, this is all there. Um, and the transition that is done uh, so here, uh, up very upper division, um, you, al you always have this, uh, this um, couple, one from the US and one from Brazil, right? In all those movies, there's always a couple um, we have a theoretician, Doris Sommer, that has written about how the relationship between uh, the hemisphere is done by the image of couples um, getting together and studying how this relationship um, is done, how it goes. Uh, and, and then they transition from one language to another. So therefore, language uh, is homo homogenized, and they allow for a smooth encounter. Now, as I, as I reworked on this paper, I also noticed that, um, and this is interesting, because the, uh, the director for this movie is Carlos Saldanha. Actually, Carlos Saldanha does seem to have uh, a cousin that works here at BYU, if you, if you know who I'm talking about. And uh, so he's a Brazilian, Brazilian-American, and he has, um, he has shown the intent to kind of here and there a little bit of Portuguese. It's just a little bit, and it's usually on the initial encounters. Once that initial word is said, that initial contact is done, then, then they shift to, uh, to, to English. I was curious to kind of rewatch the movie in Portuguese to see what happens when we, when we watch it in Portuguese, how they do this transition to the, to the other language. But um, I just had problems with... Um, uh, with my computer, wouldn't take the, the movie I have um, 
to do another language. Okay. And this is, this is a nice one also. He's a tourist, except that he doesn't look like one. And we'll talk about this in just a little bit. Uh, what does a Brazilian look like, right? You do see a little bit, so the characters are pretty verbal, but you do see a little bit of sensuous communication. And this is interesting because this is a movie for kids, since it's animation, you don't see a lot of what the, the stereotypical image of Brasileiros, for example. That is transferred to the birds, right? You, but you do see a little bit of the sensuous communication, but in the figure of Jewel, there is where all the beauty is and you know, kind of startles like, uh, he, he can't even talk, but it's the image of the Brazilian that we usually see, and so it's not a human. And we're gonna, if, when you look at the production of this movie, I don't know if you have heard about it. The issue with the size of the bikini that <laughs> that they had—it was a smaller bikini originally, and they had to change and get a bigger bikini uh, for to conform to uh, American audiences. And this is this is interesting. Uh, Carlos Saldanha has shown a lot of respect uh, for his native country in the sense that this movie uh, opened up first in Brazil and then here. So this is uh, really commendable. Uh, this uh, attitude such as this uh, didn't happen before. So not only the movie is done um, with the cooperation of different countries, but you see here something new that we haven't seen in other movies. And it's the fact that, for example, that blue is not really American. So this is, this is a very hybrid character. So while you were going to see that Tulio is Brazilian, right, Tulio is Brazilian, this is new. Uh, so it's a Brazilian that uh, is very verbal, is not the macho guy, is not the Latino. Uh, it's, it's a, new, a new type that we see there representing South America, representing Brazil. But this, this character uh, so is different. We'll, we'll see a little bit of this hybridity um, in just a minute. Another issue of the otherness is the female body. So I don't know how many of you are aware of the image of the Brazilian women here in the US and probably in other countries. Um, and how much, of, how much of that is there, right? And, uh, and how much of, the, of that is not there uh, in the sensuousness that you have. So of course you do have a little bit of a stereotype. For example, the very first image. How many of you have seen the movie? Have you seen the movie? So that first one there on the top left, so she's a dentist. So the chances that that will actually happen, right, are very slim. That, that's, that's not very usual. It might, might happen, but it's not yet typical. And it's not, you would have to go deeper. So the, the name of this set of presentations is Brazil, like, like getting to know at a deeper level. So you can see that this very first one is very stereotypical. It's kind of responding, <coughs> it's responding to expectation of the American audience. But the second one, when Linda dances the samba, is also interesting. It's not exactly new in the sense that, you know, Linda at the beginning, she kind of says, I would never dress like that. I would never do this very sensual appearance, right? It's, it's an, an inhibited, an inhibited body. Uh, so I see transpose, Linda from the beginning and Linda from the end, she's very different. And by doing that, I think, I think uh, he does it very well because he allows the spectator to experience a little bit of that culture through through Linda, the performance of Linda. She does end up dancing the samba, though she's not aware that she's dancing the samba, that she's participating in carnival. And this is another point that needs to be brought up. What is carnival and the symbolic meaning of carnival, uh, both at a superficial level and carnival in a more uh, anthropological level? What, is, what does it uh, represent? Um, <clears throat> At the, at the core, what you have is that both parties, both the Brazilian and both the Americans, they share essential values of friendship, of love, of preservation of nature, of fighting evil, 
all while sharing a certain naivety. <clears throat> okay. So Doris Summer, the theoretician I told you about, had brought us to our attention how national ideals are all ostensibly grounded in natural heterosexual love. Any marriages that provide a figure for apparently nonviolent consolidation with an exhortation to be fruitful and multiply, such encounters being often invited by a male colonizer and a female native. This is not only in Brazil, in all of Latin America, you see this narrative. In Rio, therefore, we have parallel romances, one between blue and jewel, which is an arranged match, naturalized in order to preserve the threatened, uh, it speaks Macau, and a second one between the humans, Tulio and Linda. And Tulio, he's an or ornithologist, and, but he also has veterinary skills, and she's a bookstore owner, and both, both of them are later turned into keepers of the bluebird sanctuary. So for the birds, captivity breeding is hope. And for the, for the humans, the coupling it just happens in a very serendipitous way. But for both pairs, it results in offsprings, as the movie will show Blue and Jules Chicks and Tulio and Linda's riding on a tandem motorcycle with Fernando. And we'll see about Fernando in a little bit. On an apparent, uh, on, on a reverse of roles, Linda, who is the outsider, is actually tied to symbols of domesticity, being the female character. While Tulio, the native Brazilian, is the well-traveled bilingual scientific character. Linda, representing US interests, only comes to Brazil, and this is interesting, she only comes to Brazil moved by Tulio's exhortation for her to take action, and by returning blue, preserve the species. So we don't, we don't have, what, what you often see, at the, the, what you often, see, when you look at the US as represented by media from outside the US, is a very um, bullying persona of the US, right? And um, then here you don't have this. You don't have this, uh, um, how do you call it? You call it um, like a commandeering kind of uh, personality. No, here, Linda, the US interest is only going abroad because it's being asked by that other country for her to kind of uh, move and, and help solve a situation. The plot then dispels an imperialist portrayal of the US, which is represented as very comfortable where it is and only ventures abroad at the request of said countries. Okay, now, we all know that Carlos Saldanha, when first thought about doing this story, thought that blue would be a penguin. But given that so many movies came out with penguins, if you remember, Surf's Up, March of the Penguins, Madagascar, Happy Feet, they all came up around this time. So blue ended up uh, morphing into the critically endangered Macau. It's interesting to note that blue, let's see if it's the next one, that blue is not actually foreigner, since he was smuggled from Brazil as a chick and cared for as a pet by Linda when the crate he was in breaks apart. Therefore, issues of national identity are brought to the screen. And uh, this is a quote from Homi Baba narrating the nation, uh, the other is never outside or beyond us. It emerges forcefully within cultural discourse when we think we speak most in intimately and in indigenously between ourselves. You also see this other that is in us when you see, when you see Linda dance, right? So, so it's the other that is in us. We're not so different. Um, so this is what you have here, here too, right? He has to kind of discover who he is. Um, in fact, Blue and Tulio, Blue and Tulio reflect a genus character in the sense that they both re review hybridized experience, according to B. Ashcroft and Baba. Though Brazilians both navigate comfortably the American culture with no visible sense of estrangement at all. In Blue's case, his ignorance of his Brazilian roots shows that he's been acculturated into Minnesotan culture. 
In Tullius' case, he has crossed to the other side. What is the other side? Is it the American side? Is it the bird side? We see that he is beyond his limits. Jewel, at first rebuffing, rebuffing Blue's inability to fly, invites Blue to gain domain of this, for him, third space. Blue needs to fly. Where what once was, made, was what made him a bird now has to be negotiated. So if you are a bird, you got to fly. If you're a macaw, you have to fly. You cannot not fly. Now, what does it mean not being able to fly? Is it representative of Brazilidad to Brazilians? If a Brazilian has lived abroad for over 20 years, as is the case of Carlos Saldanha, has this person lost touch with that uniqueness, uniqueness that makes him or her Brazilian? If so, it is unavoidable that disseram que eu voltei americanizada by Carmen Miranda, and you can Google this. This is spectacular. So Carmen Miranda, if you guys know her, was uh, a musician from the 1930s, and she was invited to come to the US, and she lived here many years. During her time, she was the best paid among men and women of her time. No one got paid more than she did. Um, but when she went back to Brazil, at one point she was booed. They didn't like, and, and they, they said that she had become Americanized. And then she, she came up with a song. Disseram que eu voltei Americanizada. Both of them, Carmen Miranda and Blue, are urged to reclaim their Brazilidad, though a higher demand is placed on Carmen Miranda, who left Brazil as an adult, while Blue resembles a tabula rasa, having left Brazil too young. So his attempt is to fly, right? At the same time, English-speaking Tullio sees bird-morphing Linda abrasileirando-se. That is, the hybridization process go beyond normalized expectations. This happens, for example, when Linda, in a bird costume during that carnival, unbeknownst to her, dances the samba. And then there is another scene, and did I put it here? I didn't put it here. If you remember the movie, if you have seen as a, it as a child, The Tres Caballeros, you probably remember when Pato Dono is there. He's, 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 he kind of starts dancing the samba. He just can't resist that sound. So you have the same, the same thing here, the same thing with blue. They just can't resist. So that's the sensual experience. It's so huge, so strong, the pull. By placing the American girl to dance the samba, the movie comforts the, uh, the American audience on an opportunity to experience a performatic embodiment of the Latin American other, and in a pleasurable way, they, mit they mystify notions of sin and purity. The other is in us. Now, there are a few more points that we have to mention at, uh, here. Um, the, pro the portrait of the Latin American women as brasileiras, as sensuous, seductive, irresistible. So we have it transferred we have it transferred to, of course, to Jewel, the bird, right? Essentials in the issue of the bikini, that, they, that scene, they had to kind of make the bikini bigger. Uh, it was requested by American audiences. Uh, the, the issue is such, for example, in the schools, uh, immersion schools, uh, in, even for French too, right? They, they are putting stickers on the children's books uh, to kind of hide, like, showing a part that we shouldn't see here in American culture. So we're doing, I know we're going to do that for uh, Monica and Cebolinha for sure. Um, but, um, so, but here we have another one. So we have this one. This is the very sensuous one. They couldn't do it in a woman, right? They did it in the bird, right? The very sensuous one. By transferring the Brazilian female allure to a bird, the movie subdues the traditional oversexualization of the Brazilian female body, making it palatable to children while still allowing a counterpoint with the more, with the more reserved American female body of Linda. Now, another one that you have, of course, if you look at the hat with the fruits, right? 
That's the iconic Carmen Miranda. It's, she's brought back into the movie on purpose in comic reverie. And uh, as this, cost, this carnival costume for the bulldog and for the guard, right? Uh, uh, the guard, uh, at the end of his shift, he's already in costume. Which is, uh, th therefore, you have a de deconstruction. A, a man dressed as a woman, right? And uh, you have a little bit of a deconstruction. You have a little bit of a reverie there. Uh, we don't really go to the point of um, saying that we're just mentioning gays in a movie for kids here, but it, we're, we're pretty close. We're kind of saying, you know, we're kind of transposing a limit here. Now this is very new, uh, but it, it's very uh, contemporary and uh, belonging to our times. Very often in the past movies, the musicals we have referred to before, uh, produced here in the US, the excuse for the encounter was always show business, right? You had, you had a show, Americans would go to Brazil to perform a show, Brazilians would come to the US for a show. Now, it has changed now. Now it's for ecological purpose. Uh, we have to, um, the species, uh, to su the survival, right? Uh, they, they learn to fly. Now, this is therefore is trans transferred to science. Um, of course, it's, it's telling us about the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, math is today's buzzword everywhere and a key strategy for development in Brazil. Uh, and you, the Economist is, has plenty of articles about uh, the importance of uh, that field for Brazil. Sergio Hazendi, Brazil's ministers, Minister of Mines and Energy, is continuously speaking to U.S. technology companies about Brazil's potential and goals. The program, Science Without Borders. So Science Without Borders is a pretty strong program in Brazil. The goal is to bring 100,000 young Brazilians uh, abroad to learn about science and technology and bring back their findings. So strong that once they realize that uh, Brazilians do not have the English skills necessary because they are thinking mostly US, right? That's what, when they are talking about technology, they want them to come to the US, to England. So they created the English Without Borders to make sure that they are, they are ready. Uh, so you see that we're going the other way, right? From, from what was done before. Now the movie Rio was timely released before Rio Plus 20 which was the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Environment. Now, Rio 2 is also coming right two months from now, right? In April, right before the World Cup. And I bet we're gonna see Rio 3 before the, the Olympics, right? In 2016. So they are very smart about it. Brazil is, is, is very high um, up there, right? Now, then you, what you have here, you have something interesting. So, though the Brazilian male in this movie is the leader in this scientific attempt, the research facilities are not adequately secured. And at the least oversight, the criminals that had infiltrated in the operation now have the opportunity to steal developable, developable birds and have them ready for trafficking. And here we enter in another issue very sensitive to all times, which is the representation of slums, poverty, gangs, violence, drugs, trafficking, and Afro-Brazilians. Now, uh, Bianca Freire Medeiros op had observed that in flying down to, that flying down to Rio was the first and the only of the musicals from this time frame, 1933 to 1953, about Rio, that included Afro-Brazilians in their cast. No other movie did that. They're all white, there are, there are no blacks in those movies. After that, after that first movie, there is an attempt by both governments in the US and in Brazil to censor showing black people, afraid that the United States may get the wrong impression that the blacks dominate over the white. And, and people have transcribed that uh, from different places, pointing out so if, uh, I don't know if you have seen this lesser known movie, uh, It's All True by Orson Welles. Uh, it's, it was actually came out in 1993, but it's from a 1942 unfinished film. And in this film that he did, 
the, the, uh, the topic is urban poverty, and it takes center stage. But this movie was boycotted by powers in both countries. He couldn't finish it. Uh, he, he tried hard and couldn't. Uh, so only in 1993, people were able to kind of go back and bring it, bring it to us. Rio couldn't take the same stance. Rio could not avoid talking about the slums, talking about gangs, talking about poverty and trafficking and crime. Because after movies such as City of God and Elite Squad, it was just impossible not to say, to, to pretend that it didn't exist. Now, how is this done? It's, it's interesting because the, the major uh, crook, uh, the cockatoo, cockatoo, that one, he's not Brazilian. Isn't, that bird is not native of Brazil. It's actually from, uh, from Australia and it was imported. Uh, the other ones that you have, I don't have it here, but are those little, the little monkeys, those ones are natives of Brazil. It kind of suggests that there is an international ring, right, coordinating um, uh, the criminality in Brazil. So it's not just there, it's not isolated, but there is, there is a network making this happen, right? So once the Macaus escape, Nigel, the, the, the cockatoo, coerces the marmoset monkeys to capture the mac macaws again. <clears throat> the, threat of, the threat of violence is toned ton down by Fernando. A favela, and I haven't done this, but it's worth doing uh, later on, is to kind of look at the names and see the meanings of the names. And, um, and see the way he's playing with them. Um, um, Tulio is an interesting name. Uh, it has some references for us to look at. And of course, Linda and Jew and, uh, and Blue, uh, you probably have heard about. A lot of people say that saudade is a word that is unique, right? It's, we have saudade in Portuguese. We don't have saudade in English, right? They say that. So they got the name Blue. Uh, reference to that. So the, the threat of violence is torn down by Fernando, a favela kid lured to help the criminals, but that later redirects his path and, su and support Tulio and Linda's efforts to rescue Blue and Jewel, affirming therefore that redemption is possible and that kids in a position similar to Fernando are essentially good, just in need of guidance. Salvation, right? The, the, the coupling when they, um, they finally get together. In most of the early films, the very early ones we saw, hemis hemispheric couples never end up together. Uh, there's issues of jealousy or she's just plain, she's not really serious about him or uh, he's actually flirting but he, he ends up with another, uh, an American woman, not, not the Latino. But it's only in films from the third period, um, Mel Goza talks about, he, div he divides the history in three periods, so the third period goes from 1970s to the present. It's only films from these third periods that will present inter-American couples finding happiness in their relationships. And of course, the film closes with constituted families suggestive of stable, fruitful, mutually beneficial partnerships between U.S. and Brazil. Of course, it projects us to the future as we now await Rio 2, and I imagine um, 2016 with the Olympics will bring us. Uh, and uh, look, let me show you this. This is nice. Like, this is Disney, right? The end, and, and Rio f ends with Finn. And then, of course, we're kind of I'm anxiously waiting uh, Rio 2. So for 2014 now, and uh, Rio 3, hope, three, hopefully in 2016. So that, that was my presentation. Questions, comments? Uh, yeah. yeah. So if you have a question, please, please come to the microphone so when they're recording, you, you, your question can be heard better. And um, while you're thinking of your questions, I'll, I'll ask a first question. Um, Deborah, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, I have a question about your reading of the, the villainous bird. Um, 
I forget his name, but the, the cockatoo who comes from it's, Australia. Uh, oh, yeah, the name is wonderful, isn't it? it uh, the name is Ni Nigel. Oh, Nigel. That's Nigel. right, Nigel. Right, Evil is Nigel. Awesome. Um, mm. is, is there, uh, could a possible um, other reading of that bird be by linking this foreign evil, negative, bad element to the, um, the, 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 the criminals in the favela, is another reading of that possibly uh, casting residents of the favela as estrangeiros, as, as foreigners, as you know, people who, 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 who aren't authentically Brazilian or perhaps don't belong within Brazilian society? Well, I didn't I'm, think, I'm just thinking I didn't out loud think here. Of, I didn't I'm think like that, but I, I thought that uh, some foreigners infiltrate. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought, that there is some infiltration of Brazilian spaces. Uh, I didn't think that was the favela in its totality, mm -hmm. right? But uh, some members from there. Yeah, it made me think yeah. of earlier national projects to, you know, Either Eliminate bulldoze, favela, uh, bulldoze yeah. favelas, or 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 cast favelas as non-Brazilian in some way, or not not part of the Brazilian urban project. And so, by linking the favelas here with the foreigner, I wondered if if that might be because it's not reading. in its totality. You have the monkeys, right? Mm -hmm. And monkeys are native too, and and they are they they are in the same That's space. That's true. That's and in true. terms of numbers, they are much more than just that one, the one bird. but you have that one is the leadership mm -hmm. right that one is the motivator is, is the one that is getting everybody to do yeah. that and you have you have different scenes that that echo the same so for example at the very beginning at the very beginning when you have when they take blue out uh, uh, then you have the shadows uh, of the hands um, right and that bird is going abroad that bird is not mm -hmm. being trafficked to go to another place in brazil he's been trafficked to go abroad yeah. and then later on you have with fernando it's also the money so you have this reference right uh, agreements done at the ex for money um to go abroad for you know kind of yeah. some some reference uh, that's so i think in this sense it kind of eases the burden of Mm -hmm. All the harm that happens in Brazil, we kind of say, it's not us, right? Yeah. We have those forces corrupting us. Mm -hmm. so Very good. Thank you so much. We have, we have time for uh, maybe just a couple of the questions, if you'd like. Please come to the microphone. No, but I'm telling, uh, my son is, uh, is doing animation. I'm saying, you know, I really got to go visit. Uh, and I, I, I don't want, I want to kind of go there and I want to see his team. Um, now if, another interesting thing I didn't mention here but uh, it's worth uh, looking at is um, if you look for the one, the movies from Disney, not only you see the movies from Disney, but you also see the whole tour that the whole team did. So this is all part of the discourse of discovering you know, kind of representing Latin America. We went there, we saw this, the drawings we did is what we saw, like, like naturalizing it. It's very real, it's very true what we saw, it's here. And he does absolutely the same, 100%. You're gonna see, you go on the internet, you're gonna see videos of his team going to Brazil and his team, it's very same scenes as you see uh, the group from Disney, that there is a moment that they bring artists, uh, you know, uh, people who do cartoons and painters and people who dance and to mingle with them, to kind of tell them in an exchange, right? Uh, they do the same, Carlos Saldana and his team, they do the same and you see the parallel there. I want to kind of, when I started this first, I was really looking more to those other uh, movies, to, uh, to the musicals. And, and now uh, another step is kind of to do more with Anima from animation to animation, right? The Disney uh, work and his work is, the parallel is really close. Very, very, very interesting. Now, of course, um, the Disney ones, they don't have the, they don't have the, um, the hemispheric coupling that Disney doesn't have. It's just, it's, a f it's a, just a, a foreign gaze. It's someone like, a sing single that gets there and, 
uh, but which was also uh, at that time there would be just some light flirting and but and then goodbye. Well, we'll go our own ways. And then dance together. Yeah, and then yeah, then it's time to go back home. You know, uh, marry someone from back home and things like that. But that this was like like Melgoza said, it's only after 1970s that uh, we start to see the, them staying together. Um, join with me, please, in thanking uh, Professor Pajeda for her presentation. <laughs> <laughs>